Dan is here. Yes, hello, Dan. How are you doing? You feeling better? Uh, yeah, better. Better. Not great, but better. We'll take better. Two more chemo sessions to freedom. Hellish year. We'll take better. Yeah. Oh, we've made it to another holiday season. Somehow. Somehow. This was not a great year. We'll probably talk about that more next week, but it it was. It was a little ornament on our tree that says 2021, two stars. Not quite 2020, but still a still. Right? You know, they 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 took some notes. Yeah. They uh they they made some effort. Still need to hold them back a year. But uh <laughs> but Tara, a thing happened. It did. The curse might be broken. We're going to talk about that thing. Much to the fury of, of people on the internet, because that's just how the internet works. I, I don't understand. You can literally get on the internet and be like, I like M&Ms, and people will be mad at you for some reason, because you don't like Reese's Pieces, or something. Yeah. Or they're allergic to chocolate, and how dare you? Like, oh, 2021 was the patch update. Yeah, it's like Cyberpunk 2077. It's still kind of a night show, but it's a little bit better. We got the patch, so it's yeah. each week. Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out in the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff. Bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? And um, we have an update, we have an important update. For all of you following along at home. Um, so, if you're just joining us, if you're new here, somehow, well, there is a goat in Sweden. Not a real goat. Giant straw goat. And it's a tradition which was started as a marketing campaign, so I feel a little less bad about Was it. it really for yeah. what for the for for the town it was a tourism thing oh it's a marketing campaign okay. to get people to visit yabla um yevla yevla yes yevla boken i learned that this week okay. well fuck it <laughs> um what they did they built this giant straw goat and they've been building it over the years repeatedly and more times than not, over the course of decades, since the 60s, the goat has been burned to the fucking ground. And we here, at this ridiculous show, have been covering this nonsense for, for several years now. I think we, we really started doing it in like 2014. And we have noticed that in the last five years, when the goat has not burned... Things have been not ideal. A bit shit. A bit. Now, my husband would say correlation does not equal causation. Mm -hmm. But that's why I do this job and he does it. <laughs> well, folks, and, and this is this, this, oh, we got video. That's the iron. That's the irony. That's the beautiful irony. We have video. That they erected the webcam to prevent this. Yeah, for the, the last what what for the last since 2016 uh, was the last year it burned, and then 2017, 2018, 20 hadn't burned. And one of the big changes they made was they put up a webcam, a 24 seven webcam, watching the goat. Well, in a stroke of irony, the said webcam, which had potentially been protecting the goat's existence is is actually what resulted in the goat being um we, we can watch here in real time together um hello grady so if you're bored with like the youtube yule log feed <laughs> or the netflix has it just put this up on your tv all day on the christmas day in the small hours of Friday, December 17th, the giant goat was set ablaze for the first time in five years, reviving the long running tradition. There it goes of locals illegally attempting to torch it and authorities scrambling to stop them. 
Police say they arrested a man in his 40s who witnesses say had been acting suspiciously before the blaze. You can't think? There it goes. Just whoosh. Giant Goat, first installed all in 1966, was a marketing ploy to bring the town some tourist trade. It was burnt out on New Year's Eve that year. It burned the very first year someone put it up. <laughs> Um. So yeah, th there it is. There it goes. Just whoosh. Man, once it goes, it really just goes. Well, it's nothing but flammable material. It's literally nothing but a fire hazard. Oh my god! Oh, we the humanity. From the three little pigs. What? We did learn this from the three little pigs. Yeah, straw. Not not the best building. Oh oh. It's got a metal frame too, which is just. Burn, baby, burn, Swedish Inferno. I just made that up. <laughs> don't, don't, don't be proud of that. Don't, don't be proud. Listen, I wrote a beautiful Christmas carol about cat treats today that is only harmed by the fact that I can't sing for shit. I, I, okay. I put it on, I put it on the Tiki Talkies. Okay. I love it. and I, I and after the, after that happened of course the um the camera started giving a uh, 404 error <laughs> I wonder why Well so, depending yeah. on now, how far away it is like that might be genuine cuz technology and heat are not friends Now we are not literally saying that burning the goat will save the world We are not literally. But we're also not not saying that Listen, for everybody. Like, if this year is magically better. For everybody out there who gets their nuts in a knot that I'm sitting out here cheering for the goat to burn. Um, <laughs> listen. It has been five years of just frustration and a little acting out, a little harmless, harmless chaos and anarchy just a great big fuck you Dude, all I this mean, it's imposed not like the order army is hiding in that inside that goat no there's this yeah it's not like you know it's not like they're housing people inside they, the goat it doesn't have a soul people it doesn't i promise you it doesn't no, it's mine. no. all goats do not go to hell what if what if the reason that not burning it, like, what if the, really the goat, every year they erect it and it is immediately possessed by Baphomet. Is that how you pronounce that? Baphomet? I'm not up on my Satanism. But he's a goat, right? So, like, what if we have to burn it in order for evil not to wash over the world? Harry, you've become that gif from It's Always Sunny with the guy with the Pepe Silva and the shit behind. Tom, how long have you known me? <laughs> have we talked about the Denver International Airport? <sighs> well, anyway. I was always like this. Well, anyway, now my watch has ended. The coat has burned. It burned surprise. I, I, I literally, I was saying last year that, I was saying last year, I was saying last week that if it didn't burn this year, we'd have to hang it up because it looked like they, yeah. they it looked like they'd beat us. Right. And look what happened. And what do you know? What do you know? You put, you put up a tweet earlier this week that you were like, wow, Loki got his revenge and you'll never know it. And I was like, I legitimately don't know if you mean the actual Norse God because of the goat. The MCU character, because of something that happened in a movie I'm going to see Wednesday. Hmm. Or... If you dropped a plate of food and somewhere your dear departed dog was laughing at you. <laughs> Any of those were plausible and I couldn't figure out which one. That's what happens when you try desperately to avoid spoilers. Um, because the internet, ha again, nuts in their nut, nut, nuts in a knot. Anyway. We're going to go with the first story that made me happy. Because... You, you kind of asked for this, dude. Because it's Christmas. God bless us, everyone. This, this one, this one. I sat there. I literally, when I got this story, I sat there laughing at it for a good solid five minutes. I was in rapture. 
bless this child. Ladies and gentlemen, bless and protect this child. Four-year-old Sydney child orders $1,000 of gelato delivered to his father's work. Wow. Kristen King used his father's phone to order multiple cakes and tubs of his favorite flavors from Messina. Now, here's what happened, and it's beautiful. A four-year-old boy left his Sydney father gobsmacked after ordering more than $1,000 worth of gelato on a food delivery app, including a personalized birthday cake. Personalized. Bless him. And tubs of his favorite flavors. Christian King used his father's phone to order $1,139 worth of gelato and cakes from Gelato Messina. His A father, lot of gelato. His father, Chris King, had given his son his phone to keep him distracted while his sister's touch football match was happening. So you did this to yourself. Yeah. Brother. Okay. On every app on my phone, it's it's you have to use either a, a password or fingerprint. They don't stay logged in for See, exactly kind of this Apple reason. Switch, you can't do the fingerprint anymore. It's all face ID. Which is great because I just got that phone right before I started wearing masks everywhere. But also, like, I could be fucking dead. Oh, you're on an iPhone. Yeah, people could just point my phone at my face and order shit. Yeah, Android. I yeah, Android. I don't have to do that. Nice. <laughs> but yeah, this this uh, and and it's gonna it's gonna be in about in a few minutes. It's yeah. Anyway, I, I'm just gonna remember you said that. Anyway, um, so I love this story. This child, he even he even told his. He's like he said his son warned him before he had quote, something on the way, but didn't believe him until an Uber Eats delivery driver called his wife. At that moment, he realized what was going on. First of all, I thought it was 139. Then I looked at it, and it was 1,139, and we almost had a bloody heart attack. <laughs> I flicked through the screen about 30 times. That's how long the order was. It was like 99 cakes, and that's terrible. And that is terrible. He actually ordered a birthday cake for himself. <laughs> Kids are, all right, kids are, are the, are, you, you cannot, you, you cannot, you have to watch them at all times. But like, when you're seven years old, you're old enough to know that you probably don't need 99 cakes. Ugh. You probably can't eat them and they're probably going to melt because your freezer is not that big. Like. Unless the kid thought the order wasn't going through. <laughs> but this kid is going to be a fucking legend. Yeah. He's, this is, this kid is a, he's four years old. He's a goddamn legend. What? I am so happy he exists. He made my day. Like, you do, you fight the power, son. You say that now, but someday when this kid has scammed his way into being a billionaire and is shooting himself into space or like <laughs> shooting a can of his farts into space because that's what billionaires think is a good use for their money. I just, I love, I, but I love him. He's, he's <laughs> love him. so much gelato. <laughs> Bless his fucking heart. <laughs> the kid ordered like you had not paying attention to him for that long that's yeah. on you dude yeah you can't leave a small child even if they're right next to you like a seven-year-old every few minutes you gotta be like hey what's going on what are you did doing you, did you think he was really that into candy crush come on now. hey boy well, hello grady hello grady boy how you doing what's up you don't come say hi to everybody oh there's the boy Greedy want gelato? No. Maybe. No, I am, I like I, I am ex exceptionally blessed that this cat has no interest in people who, thank God. Mostly mine do not either, but last night I, was it last night? It's one night we ordered takeout from some Italian place and I was finished and I just left my plate and Simba started licking the vodka sauce off my penne. I'm like, what a random thing for you to like. And 
Dottie likes puff pastry and pop tart filling. God forbid I eat an apple turnover. She will sit there and stare at me <laughs> with the big sad eyes until I pull some puff pastry off and give it to her. So, you know that 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 uh, meme that goes around that's like uh, me joking with my friends on Twitter and the Apollo, the gift of prophecy. You seen that one? Yeah. Um. <clears throat> Just gonna put that right there. See, I was just saying this. <laughs> I mean, luckily, I don't work, so it's all his fucking money. So he'd only be stealing from himself. Man lifts sleeping ex-girlfriend's eyelids to unlock cell phones, steals $24,000. 20 year old man in China has been convicted of stealing $24,000 by lifting his sleeping ex-girlfriend's eyelids. She better be his ex. To outsmart her cell phone's facial recognition system. Her sentence is 3.5 years in prison and fine the equivalent of $3,100 for stealing his ex's mobile payment account. Uh, the Times of London reported. Citing court documents in the Chinese state-run newspaper, the Nanning Evening News. Man, apparently only uh, identified only by his surname, Huang, uh, went to the sick woman's apartment a year ago and gave her food, as well as medicine, that made her sleepy. After she fell asleep, he reportedly pressed her finger to the phone to unlock it, then he lifted her eyelids to unlock her Alipay app using facial recognition. This was like premeditated. Before changing her password and transferring money from her account to his. So here he is, be like, oh, you're sick. I'll come help. It's okay. And then he drugs you and steals all your money. This, this, this is why you're the ex. You should be an ex. Fuck you. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. You ask. Like we, I mean, we think these things are fuck. I, I, even I with the, with the fingerprint, I know you're like, these things are secure. Do you know how yeah. trivial it is to copy a fingerprint? Like they on or, myth. I mean, if you're passed out, all they have to do is pick up your phone, pick up your hand and press your thumb to it. On, on, I remember an episode of Mythbusters. They got, they like photocopied. They, they, they lifted a fingerprint, yeah. photocopied it, held up to a phone. A photocopy unlocked the phone. We live with a lot of illusions of security. Yeah. We, 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 well, you know, even a deadbolt is an illusion of security. Listen, and I, I, I know a lot of you aren't going to sleep after hearing this, but um, your door is just there. To be an indicator you don't want people to come in it's probably if someone wants to come in bad enough it's really not going to stop them thanks <laughs> merry christmas everybody he means santa <laughs> <laughs> oh but also twenty four thousand, like if it was like fifty dollars, she probably would have not noticed. No, but you had you had to you had to be the fuck nut. Twenty four thousand fucking dollars. You had to feel so yourself. Notice that missing. Motherfucker had to feel himself. Um. So let's uh let's it's it's gift time of year. Um. I uh and we have the the perfect gift for the idiot in your life. Um. Holy fucking shit. Anti 5G quantum pendants are radioactive. What? Worried that 5G phone towers are beaming dangerous levels of radio frequency radiation to your brain? To your brain? Forget the classic tinfoil hat and try try the quantum pendant. It's much more stylish accessory. Uh, not so fast. It turns out many of these products emit low levels of ionizing radiation. Now, it's not like these things are blasting it. However, they're estimating that the uh, the pendants and all these other devices are emitting about the equivalent of five x-rays a day. And 
And if you're wondering if that's bad, mm. think about the fact that the X-ray tech does not stay in the room with you. Mm -hmm. They fucking leave. Yeah. Um. So five X-rays now. Five X-rays in one day. It's it's not great, but you'd probably be fine. However, five X-rays a day, every day, every day. that you're wearing the, the the magic totem to ward off the, the, the horrible five G radiation. With radiation. So you're you're trying to not be exposed to radiation. Yeah. By wearing a radioactive necklace. Yeah. These things set off Geiger counters. I'm confused as to the logic. They assemble and what's they are so fucking sloppy assembling these things. They 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 Put them together out of volcanic materials, which, if you're not careful, contain uranium and thorium. Oh, so they're not supposed to be radioactive. Well, they kind of are. I mean, it's it's ne negative ion, which means ionizing radiation. So literally, they're wearing radiation to try and ward off radiation. Yeah. How does that make sense to anybody? If you're an idiot. Even like, to an idiot. Like. Of, these people get. So... Of all the, the radiation that humanity produces, arguably radio waves are the least harmful. The, 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 we have substantial proof over the decades of their use in every frequency and level. They are the least harmful thing we can do. However, ionizing radiation, it's like little bullets being shot at your DNA. And when little bits get knocked off your DNA, sometimes your DNA says, we'll be fine. We'll be, we didn't need that bit. We'll be, let's just keep making copies of ourselves without that bit. I'm sure it's fine. And that's how terrible things happen to your body. Or best case scenario, you just caught, you just killed your cells. That's another thing you could do too. It just outright kills them. Yeah. You would say, man, if you tried to get on a plane with one of these things and they had an actual, they don't have Geiger counters at the airports. Maybe they should, but. I also don't really understand why people are freaking out about 5G when nobody freaked out about 3G or 4G. Because it's conspiracy theory, crazy shit. They think it. it like started. why this G? Oh, they, 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 because it happened so close to the beginning of the pandemic. It's co it's a complete coincidence. I don't know how they connected the two dots, but they did. So the theory is that cell phone radiation caused a respiratory yeah. disease. And you remember, for a long time they said, "Oh, cell phone cell phones give you brain cancer." Never did. That makes more sense than a respiratory disease, though. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, this is. Uh... See, I might look like Charlie Day with his wall of theories, but I don't do this. <laughs> no, you don't do this. They make these for kids, Tara. <sighs> You'll hang one of these on your kid, but you won't let them get a shot. Yep. So <laughs> moving right along, all of us right now are probably um, in Christmas sh holiday shopping and, and a lot of us are doing it online because we don't want to die. Um, so we're dependent upon uh, shipping services to, to get our packages to. us. And as you know, the, the United States Postal Service is being sabotaged. <laughs> By an asshole. Yeah. Who pre they pretty much the idea is yeah. private shipping is better because privatizing everything is better. Private, private, private. Yeah, here's um a little example of, of privatization at work. FedEx driver arrested accused of dumping packages in North Carolina woods. Tuesday, a FedEx driver is accused of dumping a truckload of packages into the woods behind an apartment complex in Greenville. 
Police said a woman in the area watched as the FedEx driver parked his truck along the road and dumped dozens of packages in the woods. That woman called the police. Greenville police said this all happened on December 6th. When officers arrived, they saw dozens of packages placed in between trees and piles of leaves. The caller said she watched the driver walk a number of boxes deeper into the woods. Um, this seems like more work than just delivering them. Right? Um, it's a really good witness. A lot of great information, blah, 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 propaganda. Um, FedEx issued the statement. This incident is completely unacceptable and contrary to our commitment to treating corporate speak. Fuck off. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, my brother-in-law used to run work for FedEx and mm. let me tell you, like, they don't play with this shit. They no. really don't. No, he's, he's going to jail, but yeah. what's causing this and why you might be sitting there going, what the fuck? Why didn't he just deliver the packages why would he dump them in the woods they are under such pressure and such timetables they track them every fucking second yeah. of everywhere they are if you want to know why your fedex driver just will stop for like two seconds hop out of the truck throw your shit in the yard and run it's because they are being their metrics and timetables and dit 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 at this point, this dude was probably like, I can't, if I just say I delivered all this shit, I'll be fine. And it's a lot of, look at all that, that all of that shit. It was literally. Do you, want, do you remember? This reminds me of a much worse version of this story. Hmm. Maybe 10, 15 years ago on Long Island, there was a crematorium that they found out was just dumping people in the woods and giving yeah. people like wood ashes as their grandma. Yeah. I don't know how they thought that wouldn't get figured out at some point when yeah. they, dumped, they dumped like 200 bodies. Yeah. Like the woods isn't like it is in the movies. No. Pe people it's are not in there like a lot. A remote place nobody goes. Yeah. Like y you can you can dump cat litter in the woods. Sure. Right. You can't dump bodies in the woods. It's a different proposition. You or, can, you know, little Susie's Christmas presents. Yeah. I mean, you, you can drop a burger wrapper in the woods and nobody's really going to give a fuck. They should, but they don't. Bodies and packages. No, someone asked in the channel is uh, this count as the mail. Depends on whose hands it went through. Yeah. FedEx is a private company, so they are not. Tech. That's why they can't use your mailbox. They're legally right. not able. They, they cannot put things in your mailbox. They're not allowed. Yeah. So that is federal property. Yeah. So. Uh, okay. So, um, I, the, the, the meme going around this year from the children, the kids that they're, they're hot about is, um, uh, so-and-so understood the assignment. Yeah, that, that everyone everyone likes that one. It's 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 popular with with the youth. Um, I would wager to say this individual did not understand the assignment. Man allegedly robbed bank, then made deposited ATM outside. Really, <laughs> sir? McRoberts Williams. So the dude's got two last names. Uh, 44. Accused of robbing the Wells Fargo at the Price's Corner Shopping Center in Wilmington, Delaware. Uh, state police arrested him after they say he robbed the bank. The 44-year-old California man handed a teller a note saying he was robbing the bank. 25-year-old woman then handed over an undisclosed amount of cash and Williams led, left the bank. The suspect excuse me, fled the bank on foot. And once outside, he made a deposit in the ATM on the exterior of the building. He didn't even go to another bank. He, 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 he. <laughs> the man then ran behind the shopping center on foot where state troopers caught up with him and arrested him. He's charged with secondary robbery, sent to jail on $6,000 cash bond. It, it's not like home base. Mm -mm. It's not like it's in my account now. It's mine. It, it also, just, like, if they gave you 
maybe I mean maybe you needed this money to pay bills, which you do online, whatever. Mm -hmm. But if they gave you cash, yeah, you win. <laughs> right. You've you've six thousand in cash. Why are you putting it back into an account I th I where they're going to charge you to use it? I think his idea was if he didn't have the money on him, he wouldn't get caught. This is but you not, know that like your name is attached to that account. We're not. We're, we're not talking about a rocket surgeon here, Tara. <laughs> Your name usually they usually even have your social security number yeah i love it just the visual in my mind of the alarms are going off and he's running out of the building and he immediately stops he goes over and he sticks his card in and he's hitting the button the alarms are going off and he's like they have envelopes and do you know how long it would take to deposit six thousand in cash because you can only put in so much cash at a time yeah you have to it's not it used to, I mentioned the envelopes. It used to be you could just get an envelope, stuff it full of cash, and drop it in the slot. Now you have to feed right. it into a little scanner right. thing. Right. And it'll only take like maybe 10 bills at a time. So he's just sitting there like, come on, come on, come on. Dude, this was uh, not a great plan. I don't even know. I don't. How the. You would have been better off literally waiting for the Wells Fargo wagon. Yes. To come take you away. <laughs> that would have actually been uh, a better plan than just literally giving the money back to them and attaching your name to and it. He ha I love it. He, it was his bank. He banked with Wells Fargo. He's robbing his own. He had a Wells Fargo. Well, okay. No, no, he might not have had a Wells Fargo. He might have been having to count at another bank. And he was just, yeah. he was just taking up the ATM fees. <laughs> He's like, ah, it's an extra 20. It's an extra five bucks. Who cares? I got six grand now. Who cares? Jesus Christ. Sir. Fucking idiot. All right. This last one is we, we often say that one of the truths of life that you have to accept, you have to prepare yourself for, is that at any time, anywhere, Someone is going to be naked at you, whether you want them to be or not. Yeah. And it's Melbourne, Florida. Nude Melbourne man steals truck from dealership, leads cops on like chase. Your chances are a lot higher in Florida. Yeah. Nude Florida man was arrested after stealing a pickup truck from a car dealership. Authorities on a chase across Melbourne early Wednesday morning. Richard Blows, 40. Man, the, the, the stupid just keeps getting older and older. Have you noticed? It's not like these aren't like kids anymore. These are like, you know. Well, that sounds my age. Yeah. Was spotted by employee. At Maybe our generation just is fucking morons. Yeah. Probably. Uh, was spotted by an employee at Fiat of Melbourne, completely naked in a paint booth just before 7 a.m. Uh, Blows then jumped into a 2021 Dodge Ram truck, backed out of the paint booth, and drove away from the dealership. So they were painting the car, fixing it up, and this dude just like does a woohoo! It runs on in like fucking Woody Woodpecker, <laughs> hops in the fucking truck, and off he goes with his dick out. I'm pretty sure everybody working there was just like, wait, what? Just there's just like a moment where everyone is stunned. It's like a flashbang went off. They're just like, and then someone is like, oh, now we're gonna have to detail it again. <laughs> Some idiot rubbed his balls all over it. <laughs> Surveillance photo shows blows at the dealership around 5 a.m. wearing only under underwear, walking around the dealership and sitting on the roof of a car for 30 minutes. They say Bose then blows then damaged a motorcycle and a pickup truck before getting in the Dodge Ram and stealing it from the dealership. Police department contacted the stolen truck's owner. They were able to track the vehicle via GPS. So it wasn't even like a brand new truck. It was like a truck the dude had just bought and he was there getting it finished up. And officer in an unmarked vehicle saw the truck, quote, driving erratic, striking a guardrail multiple times before exiting the highway. 
police say they finally quartered blows at a house in Coco. He stepped out of the truck totally naked and didn't put up a fight when officers arrested him. He's like, yeah, you got me. Yeah, I did it. Pretty much any car made in the 2000s is going to have some kind of yeah, tracking, tracking thing. device yeah. in it. Even if, the, even if you didn't buy the OnStar, the OnStar is yeah. in the car. Like, my car security system is the fact that I drive Fisher Price as my first car. Wait, wait. Richard Blows. B L O S E. His name is Dick Blows. <laughs> <laughs> it is. His, his, and that's his real I mean, name, too, because that's that's, what, hmm? maybe that's what drove him to this point. But he, he had to be arrested under that name. Wow. But yeah, like, I, I drive a Honda Fit. Right. Which I affectionately call Fisher Price is my first car. Because it weighs about 10 pounds. Hmm. And, you know, my hatchback doesn't work. Hmm. So I don't worry about my car getting stolen because it's a stupid, ridiculous car. Hmm. It's a great car. Has 85,000 miles on it. Runs like a dream. But nobody's stealing it. It's all plastic. He drives a very nice car. Hmm. But I'm like, someone's going to take that shit. You got to drive a shitty car. But both, like, even my car that nobody wants, because it's a 2011, I promise you, they could track that shit somehow. See, I got, like, a 20-year-old truck. Ain't nobody tracking my shit. Ain't nobody care. Like, after the truck's already had a tree fall on it, nobody fucking wants it. <laughs> I mean, it's got, it's... My, other, my other theft prevention is my giant pink sticker on the back that says Mother of Cats. <laughs> Yeah, nobody like wants Nicolas to drive Cage that and his crew. Nicholas Cage and his crew are not stealing the mother of cat's car. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, my, my, my truck's still under 100,000 miles, so, you know, fuck it. It still runs. Fuck it. Yeah. Um, so the first thing we learned this week is at any moment, at any time, without warning, naked. That's, that's just a, that is a thing that literally could happen in your life. It is, it's greater than a non-zero chance. And I think I'd put it up there with, the, with, I think there's better odds of being struck, of seeing a naked person than being struck by lightning. Oh, certainly. Yeah. Yeah. That's going to happen. You are going to have unwanted nudity in your life. Some way, shape, or form. We need like a Rod Serling at any time, in any place. You could enter the naked zone. There goes copyright. Um, we have learned that it's if you've stolen money from a bank, run, f f fucking run, run away. Don't don't make transactions, you idiot. Fucking run, you yeah. idiot. Um, you're making you're making my generation look bad. Uh, we've learned that if you don't get your present this year, it's not because you were on the naughty list. It's because somebody dumped it in the woods. Somebody at FedEx might just be tired. This is not the solution, though. Like, I know we're all fuck the corporations. Eh. You're not fucking FedEx. No. You're fucking a bunch of other people. So, like, don't don't do this. We, we've learned that. If you leave us to our own devices. We will do things to make ourselves extinct. Like wearing radioactive jewelry. Yeah. We, yeah. we we've learned that uh, your cell phone, the, the the face thing, yeah, that's the illusion of security. Don't rest easy. Um. And we've learned, don't leave your phone with your child. You gotta watch kids. You have got yeah. to watch them because you if, really. Have to keep your eye on children. I know it's hard. I know they're tiny little demons. That's why you have to like. They are even if you think you have them occupied, you need to watch them because they will find a way to surprise your ass. Yeah, 
Because the human being doesn't even really wrap itself around the concept of consequences until the age of 25, which is another thing I've learned from Sexy Santa over here. <laughs> you don't fully understand the concept of consequences until the age of 25. Yeah, because your brain's... Seven, at seven, you're just an agent of chaos covered yeah. in chocolate. 